Welcome to Almost Agreeable. Almost Agreeable. With your hosts, Chris Nellison and Ed Harris. Hang around and listen to opinions on sports, sports. Movies, movies, music, music, and whatever else pops in our head. Okay, welcome to another episode of the Almost Agreeable Podcast. I'm your co-host, Chris Nellison, and with me as always is Ed Harris. So, we got another sports one for you today. We're going to be getting into, kind of following up what we did last week. We talked about the NFC East, and we kind of decided that we probably should do a segment on each division as we're approaching the NFL season. Yeah, might as well just go through all of them, kind of break it down, and just recap what we know. Right, and just kind of maybe throw some some hot takes out there. Maybe maybe they're not so hot, but I know we're going to piss off a lot of fans. Yes. Uh, after that, we'll be getting into a segment where we're going to talk about five particular NBA players whose careers were kind of cut short by injuries and like a what-if type of deal. Like, what if these guys had not gotten injured? Um, so we're into that, and the tail end of the show, as always, we're going to finish off with a hot route. I'm going to be asking Ed a couple questions today, uh, sports-related, just to kind of get his opinions on... Some things that I already do have opinions on, but I want to argue with you. Mm-hmm. Hot route. Hot route. So, uh, let's. I guess let's just jump right into it. The NFC West, okay? So for those of you that, I don't know, if you're listening to this, I hope you know who's in the NFC West, right? We got the LA Rams, the Seattle Seahawks, the San Francisco 49ers, and your Arizona Cardinals. This is, this is the actual most competitive division. Yeah, we were talking about the NFC East last week. And you were joking. Maybe. You were okay, stop. Okay, yeah, this is the actual most competitive division in football easily. I can agree, but I, I was doing some research and as I've seen it, pretty much the teams in this division, uh, I tracked their records uh, in their conference, in their division, and their road records for the last five years. So from twenty fifteen to now. And you know, I guess I can honestly say that maybe there isn't a most competitive division like all the time, but absolutely right now, yes. I think this is the most competitive division in the NFL within the last three years, at least. I can get, I, okay, I can definitely get behind that. Because, you know, there, there's waves. There's waves. Sometimes it's, somebody's just going to be dominating for a couple years. I mean, nobody's going to have, you know, another Patriots run. No, I don't. I don't. But. It's such an anomaly to me. Uh, the Patriots, I guess, I hate to use a D word, but dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> um, that dynasty started with uh, a fateful snowy night in Foxborough, but we can get to that another time. Mm-hmm. But uh, of the four teams in the division, who do you want to start with? Let's start. You what? Do you want to go from bottom to top from last year? Last so we'll start with the Cardinals. Let's start with the Cardinals. Okay, so in the last five seasons, the Cardinals have gone thirty-six, forty-two, and two. Yes, they've tied twice in the last five years. The, okay, let's just pause for a second and talk about one of the those ties? worst football game I've ever watched in my life was one of those ties. Right. Was it where they kicked field goals like from within 20 yards and missed them both? Buddy. In overtime? They ended regulation at 3-3. Three to three. That's right! The game... Oh my gosh. And then they ended overtime at 6-6. Six to six. Yes. Okay, yes. Now, yeah, refresh my memory a little bit. I, I know. I remember that game too because I remember watching and seeing both kickers biff it yep. in they, overtime. They both had a chance to win. They both had a chance to win, and... No one deserved to win that game. Yeah. Okay. So, just just had to touch on that. Okay. So, let's... Uh, we talked about the last five years. Um, only one playoff berth in that span. Okay. And that was in 2015. Okay. So, last year... Well, and that, was, that was them coming down, too, from a pretty good run. They, they had a pretty good run, like, from, I'd say... I mean, they went to the Super Bowl. What was that? 08? And they were decent... Uh, decently okay, and then it was around, yeah, that time frame, 2015-ish, that it was just like, oh, whatever, it's the Cardinals. Very good. Yeah, oops. Anyways, that's, uh, they were coming off a downturn. The, I think the saddest part for me about that team in these last five years with them not doing too hot is I love Larry Fitzgerald. He's just a, a classy dude. He, no, no controversies. No, and he well, he's just an intelligent guy. He's a super smart guy. And super nice guy too. Super nice guy. I mean, the city of Phoenix loves him. Oh, the loyalty he that he's shown, right? Him. Not leaving to go to hop on a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, which uh, is a big thing in any sport. 
Yeah. Right? You have a guy coming to the end of his career, which Larry Fitz is, I think. He's been in so long. Who knows? He might be Frank Gore. And just keep I mean, going. We can't, you know, put him to the pinnacle and be Jerry Rice because nobody is. No, no, so. that's that's an unachievable goal. There. Yeah. Unattainable. I'd but, love to get into his stats one of these days. Oh, God, that's a nightmare. Um, but, yeah, so hasn't done that. Very little guy. So, in 2019, the Cardinals go 5-10-1. So, they had one of their ties in the last five years last season. We got Kyler Murray coming in. He wins Rookie of the Year. He throws 20 touchdowns, 12 picks. Saddest part of his stat line right now is he was sacked 48 times. It was a lot. Those are Russell Wilson numbers. Yes, they really are. I really do think that uh, I expect to see a lot of growth from Kyler Murray in this coming season, right? The 5-10 and 10 record with that one tie in there indicates to me, because the season before that, uh, I think they had like three or four wins. Yeah, it was something. They, they, they were at the bottom. Right. Yeah. So I have a lot of faith in what in Kyler Murray's growth. I really see it. He was he threw for 232 yards per game last season. Um, which, is, which is solid. I think the so it's solid for a rookie quarterback, but it's kind of sad to see that their their running game was tenth in the NFL, which isn't terrible. It's not middle of the pack. It's still pretty good. But as a rookie coming in, you want to have a running game so he can learn the system, the ins and outs of the NFL, and perform at a higher level. You can't rely on him to throw in every situation as a rookie. It, it's going to stunt his growth just slightly because balanced football teams, as we've seen in the past. That's who gets it done. So, 10th in the NFL isn't bad, but that, you can get that, that. That's contending. That's it, like that, that could easily be contending. And if you have good quarterback play over the course of the season, that could set them up for going to the playoffs. That's, that's, that's not a bad place to be. That's not a bad running game to have when you're a rookie quarterback. And, I mean, he was doing all he could. He was. He really was. I mean, he's running around there, a the little guy. It, just it's so funny to see him run though. It's like it just reminds me of like Stewie from Family Guy. You just, I just hear the footsteps like. Doo, 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 doo. He is kind of he's a small guy, but he's. I mean, yeah, he's in the same division as the Seahawks. So I'm just gonna be biased this entire time. But I mean, who do they pick up? Oh my goodness! Well, I was gonna get to that. Okay, so <laughs> yes, DeAndre Hopkins. It's the big thing on everyone's mind when it comes to the Cardinals. So I do want to get to that. We'll talk about it for a second. But before we get to him. I talked about Kyler Murray being, you know, promising young man. We talked about the running game, which is decent, probably can get better. But their problem isn't in any of those facets, okay? They finished dead last in total defense last season. They gave up 402 yards a game last season, and they were in the bottom five of ter- of takeaways. Ooh. Okay, so it's their defense that needs some work, right? That 5-10 and ten and 1 record, those five... That's Kyler Murray probably doing everything he can, running around little Stewie, just doing whatever yes. he can. Yes. Those 10, probably his defense, allowing 400 yards a game. That's And that's hard to overcome. Now you're not even playing, you're playing against the other team, and now you're playing against your own defense. Right, you're playing from behind essentially the whole time. The whole time. Right, the, the, the whole game plan of a game changes depending on the score. And if you're behind the whole time, you can't, you can't establish that 10th ranked running game. If you're behind, you're playing from behind, you got to speed up, you got to throw. Messes with the mindset of not just any quarterback, but of a rookie that now putting the thought into their head like, okay, well, I need to be the guy. Right. Because you, you have to be. Like, that's kind of what your team needs you to be when that's not really conducive to, you know, maybe developing a complete quarterback. You want them to have multiple facets of their game and always playing from behind. And yeah, of course, they, quarterbacks are the guys. But always having to be is stressful. Well, I feel like that's why most of your very successful quarterbacks that we have grown up with have been dudes that sat on the bench for their first couple of years of their career. Yeah. Okay, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Those type of quarterbacks sat behind another quarterback for a couple of years. They studied the playbook. They watched film. They watched these guys do their thing. Pat right? Mahomes. Now, he sat for a little he bit. He sat for a little bit, right? Not as long as, let's say, Aaron Rodgers did behind Correct. Brett Favre. Correct. Right? Um, Tom Brady came in because Drew Bledsoe gets hurt. But those guys sat behind a quarterback for a couple years. Kyler Murray, like you said, thrown right in and constantly behind in games where he has to be the guy. And he won Rookie of the Year. He He showed that he might potentially could be the guy. He shows promise. He shows promise. So I do like the Cardinals. uh, I'm saying an over-under at seven and a half wins. Okay. 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 
But that's a tough division. So that, I mean, we're not I was done. Gonna say, yeah, that's a tough division. Say that's it. the saddest part is that maybe they are on the uptick, but <laughs> damn, do they play in a fucking very good division? Maybe we'll see what the Rams do. I was like, oh, that's a pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I was like, I could see. I'll take the under on that. Let's say seven. Seven. I'll take the under on that. Now let's talk about DeAndre Hopkins. Man, am I jealous of that? Man, am I jealous of that? Like. That guy, I it wasn't it wasn't this past year, but it was the year before. The guy had zero drops, zero. How how how? Just throw it in his general direction. He'll come down with it. <laughs> He'll come down with it, and he had some catches that just ended up being thrown out because of pi. Right. And still, he would still catch those ridiculous body control catches. No, it is ridiculous, and I this is going to be amazing for what we just talked about for Kyler Murray. Right to have a guy who's if you just throw it in his general direction, I mean, Jameis Winston would love a guy like this. Dude, yeah, just okay. well, hey man, he's got Mike Evans. Well, he had Mike Evans and Godwin. Yeah, you know, he had some guys who were just doing it. And that's what I think DeAndre Hopkins can bring to this this offense. That is true. Is a like, playmaker um, who catches everything. Zero drops. You said that is an amazing stat. Ridiculous. Okay, so like I said, he's one of the biggest reasons I I give the seven and a half, right? And I, I feel like that's low. But factored into that is the division they play in. And, well, yeah, absolutely. You got six games. You got two against the Seahawks, two against the 49ers, and two against the Rams. That's a hot one. Okay, they they went one and five in the division last year. Just saying. Yikes. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. So, like I said, over under seven and a half. I'll give them that. Okay. okay. So let's let's go into the Rams now. Let's go into the Rams. What were the Rams last year? They were what nine and seven. They were nine and seven. I I don't know. <sighs> What happened to the Rams? Todd Gurley. Mm, yeah, okay. That is... That's going to be my biggest talking points today. That is 100% correct. Okay, 9-7. and seven, Goff throws 22 touchdowns, 16 picks. Only sacked 22 times. Not a not a bad yeah. number. Yeah. Okay. He averaged close to 300 yards a game, 289. Okay. and But they were 26 in rushing. This takes us back to Todd Gurley. Only 93 yards per game in rushing. Todd Gurley... Like, you know, we're going back five years talking about stats and stuff like that. Todd Gurley, I think it was the their last year of being the St. Louis Rams. I think it was 2015. And in that time frame, they were still just like, oh, it's it's the Rams. You know, they're winning three games a year, two games a year. They were bottom feeders with Jeff Fisher. Yes. Right? When Jeff Fisher, Jeff Fisher was head coach, sure, and they were bottom sure. feeders. But he... Always lit up the Seahawks, dude. I mean, you see somebody twice a year, of course, something's going to happen. That's the great thing about divisional games. But man, like, it was, you know, I have some friends who are Rams fans, and they're just like, oh, well, we're going to count this as a loss, you know, we're playing the Seahawks, and I'm like, ah, I don't think so, because Todd Gurley just decides that he wants to do whatever he wants. Right, and now he's gone. And now he's gone to the Falcons. Well, that'll be another episode that'll when we talk about the episode. NFC South, South, right? That's a good division, too. That, is, that actually is a very competitive division. You know division. who else the, four, the Rams lost this year? Clay Matthews. Where do you get a pass rush outside of Aaron Donald? The Rams, uh, I see you... taking a... To, I feel like, personally, to me, I see the Cardinals having a better record than the Rams this year. You see them taking a big I step do, back? I do, taking a big step back. So, when they went out and signed... Everybody. All of these people. Yes, everybody. I was sitting there watching it, being, you know, a Seahawks fan, and being like, you know what? I hope they do this, and then nothing happens. And then they just wasted everything. It was a bunch of one-year deals. It was. And it got them to the Super Bowl it, it that year. It absolutely did. It it worked. It, it did work. It did. Because that was a terrible Super Bowl, too, against the Patriots. That was yeah. like a low-scoring game. Yeah, was... we were taking side bets the whole game. That's right. We were playing the dollar bet game. DBS, dollar bet system. Trademarked. So they have all these one-year deals with all these guys. And then, you know, they leave. Hey, Matthews is gone. Todd Gurley is gone. I see him taking a big step back. And I know a couple of Ram fans that may or may not be listening to this. But, uh, yeah, uh, they're taking a step back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. No apologies. Not at all. Uh, I like Sean McVay. He's an innovator. He's a young guy. Super smart guy. Super smart guy. Super smart guy. He's going to be around for a while if he can... Keep them above water. I think I don't think should be a problem with the talent that they currently have. They have talent, and I think a lot of Jared Goff's success was because you had Todd Gurley in the backfield. 
I, I do agree with that. Well, I guess let's go back to, do you think that, you know, Sean McVay came out in, what is this, 2017, and was just, like, hot? Like, yeah. Like, he just did great. Do you think that people have figured out, like, this new Wonder Boy? Do you think that's what it is? Uh, okay, so that's a double that's a double tiered question because so I don't think they figured it out, but it's becoming more common because it's not just McVeigh anymore. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan comes in as San Francisco. Yeah. He's doing the same kind of thing. You have younger coaches coming in with these different kind of schemes, and maybe they're figuring it out. I think Sean McVeigh could maybe have another one more winning season in his tenure, but his time is running out, especially mm. with no running game. What are you gonna do? Well, I mean, okay, that's the thing about running backs is they're not a dime a dozen. I mean, prolific running backs are. I mean, prolific running backs are, like, hard to come by, you know? Right. But coming by a running back who can just get the job done if you have a decent O-line, that's that's what you – you can get by with that. You don't need a Zeke. You don't need a Saquon. You don't. You just, you just don't, but it definitely fucking helps. And that's what I'm saying. That's why you need a Todd Gurley, because that 26-ranked defense or uh, rushing game doesn't just reflect the lack of Gurley. It reflects the offensive line. Yeah. So, no, they can't just bring in anybody unless they, you know, revamp their offensive line. So, let's just stop talking about the Rams. I hate them anyways. Um, <laughs> taking a step back. And that's an objective. I just said I hated them, but it's objective that I think they're taking a step back. I'm looking at stats. I'm looking at personnel changes. and Looking, they're, at, looking at growth. Within their division. Right, with the Cardinals more particularly. That's why, hot take right now, they're finishing at the bottom of the NFC West next year. That's a hot one. That is a hot one. Let's let's move on to the 49ers. Uh, oh, right on to the 49ers. Okay. Yeah, I, well, I figured you want to talk about the Seahawks last. Ah, okay, okay, we can do that. Okay. The 49ers weren't good for the last five years until last season. Okay, they went 20-50 and 50 in the last five seasons. Between their two Super Bowls. They were not great. They were, no, I don't know why you're saying they're not great. They were terrible. They were. They were. No, not, they're sugar coated. They you got to throw the word great. "great" in there to make them feel good about themselves. But they were <laughs> terrible. Okay, and I know a lot of 49er fans, and this is for them, dude. Man, 2019, 13 and three. 13 and three. They went out and had Jimmy G leading the way. 27 touchdowns. Yeah. 13 picks. Not terrible. Sacked 37 times. Not terrible. He played the game. He he was middle of the pack as quarterback scale. I agree. He was he was B minus C plus tier. Yep. He he was getting the job done. He was he wasn't killing you out there. No, he wasn't. And I bet I bet you can already you already know why what took them to the Super Bowl. It wasn't Jimmy G throwing the ball. That massive run game. The second. The second top running game in the NFL last Ridiculous. season. Ridiculous. Okay, 144 yards per game. Just for shits, could you name the number one? Ravens. It was the Ravens. Yep. Okay, good. Another day, another day. So, But they did have the most rushing touchdowns at 23. Okay, so that run game, second ranked. We talked about how important run game is, especially when we're talking about the development of Kyler Murray. So when you have a run game like you do in San Francisco, Jimmy G's job is a lot easier. Definitely. Well, I guess we could go with... Did it make his job too easy? Yes. Let's let's go on the flip side of that. Did it make his job too easy? Then whenever he had to become the guy, he didn't always crumble, but he had more than a couple opportunities for him to just be the guy, and he he wasn't able to deliver. There there were a couple games when he just came out and was just slinging it though. Yes, he looked good. He looked good for flashes. But it's because but it's because the running game. But it's because you know. You have to play your defense expecting these guys to run. So you have single coverage. You have single coverage. You have linebackers rushing in to stack the box. So you don't have those guys in pass coverage. So your question saying, was it too easy for him? Did it make it too easy? Yes. Jimmy G's been in the league a long time. He sat behind Tom Brady for a very long time. So do I think that you know this is going to be a problem for him? No, I think he can grow. I think well, he can coming adapt. Up, this is year six for him coming up? Something like that, yeah. yeah. I see them taking a step back. You lose Emmanuel Sanders. Okay. When he came in in week eight, made a big difference on that passing game. It for did. Jimmy G. It did. It was huge. It was big time. He's gone now. So your running game, not a whole lot of holes. 
uh, in the off season. And, no, you know, so they're gonna that running game is still gonna be it's legit. It's gonna be solid. It's gonna it's still carry it. That's what you need. That's what you want. You know, it's like keep what was working. But he needs to not only bounce back after losing the Super Bowl. Yeah, don't but take have, a step forward. You don't want to have that Super Bowl hangover where it's just like no. Oh man, we were there. Okay, we got to we got to get right back into it. That's that's the mindset you got to have. You just got to get back right into it like you were there. You were there and you were winning. You had it. You right. lost it. And he still got uh Kittle, right? Yes. Who oh, was only God. outperformed by Travis Kelsey by 1 yard per game yep. last season, okay? Just 1 yard was the difference. You got Debo Samuel. You got Debo Samuel. Who was just uh electric. That guy made so many people miss. But uh, for me, I don't think they're going to go 13-3 and three again. I do see him competing for the division title with the Seahawks. I guess I'd have to look at their schedule and see what they're going to do. But I would say I would say they'd probably be like 11 or 12 wins. Because I, I still think they're a dominant team. They're very physical. Super physical team. Yeah. A lot of good names on it. And if it, it really all just depends on Jimmy G. He needs to step now into being... A leader. Yes. Okay, you you have now finally a full season. Yeah, not uh, marred by injuries. Full season. Sit on the bench. Like I mean, I don't want anybody to get injured. Like, but okay, yeah. Now we've seen a full season from him. What are we gonna see in this next full season? Right. He has to continually improve. You know, you have to get better. You have to sometimes, sometimes carry your team. You don't want it to be all the time. Like, like poor Kyler. Like poor Kyler and the next team we're gonna get into. Poor Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, poor, it's a good segue. Poor, poor Russell Wilson. It's a good segue. Let's talk about those Seahawks. Oh, man. Seahawks have been the most successful team in that division in the last five years. Okay, last year they go 11-5. and 11-5 and five is a good record in the NFL, but when you have a team in your division that goes 13-3... and three, Well, that's that's just what happens, you know? But hey, look, it doesn't matter. Seahawks can win the division 7-9, and nine, so... Yeah, that's real life. Stats, it happens. This is back when they were like the NFC East. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, they only missed the playoff once in the last five years. Okay, so eleven and five. Russ throws thirty-one touchdowns last season, and only throws five picks. Yeah, only five. On the other hand, he's sacked forty-eight times. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm talking about earlier with Russ numbers. It's... Russ gets sacked so many times. As a matter of fact, he has not been sacked less than thirty-three times since he's been in the league. Ever. Ever. He, he, he's the guy who has to go out and make the plays. I mean, ever since Marshawn left, like the, the year after, the, well, the years following um, that faded day, that faded interception in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, it's just been kind of a downhill. And, I mean, it's not like straight downhill to the bottom of the barrel. But the next year, we only went to the divisional round. And then the next year, we only went to the wild card round. And then the next year, we missed the playoffs. And then we had made it back. Well, I think, I mean, I'm not done talking about sacks yet. I'm really not. Okay, I want to <laughs> Why know do you have so many sack stats? Because it's a big deal. Because you just said before we got into this, the segue you made was that depending on one guy. And when you depend on one guy that like this and how it goes, since he's been in the league, okay, sacked 33 times, then 44, then 42, then 45, then 41, then 43, and then 51 times. Mm -hmm. And he still throws up stats like 31 touchdowns and only five picks. Yes, that is the guy. If the Seahawks did not have Russell Wilson, they're easily... I mean, last year they predicted that the Seahawks would go 4-12. and 12. They don't have they don't have Russell Wilson. Absolutely, that happens. Yes, they had you throw any other. I mean, not any other quarterback, but you throw 29, 28 of the other quarter starting quarterbacks in the league in his position. They're getting five wins, and they're only getting sacked wins. more times because Russ can move. Well, that's actually a him getting sacked is kind of conducive to his play style because he runs around so much and extends the play so much. That's why he gets sacked so much. It's a good take. It it's he he if he wasn't doing all that stuff, he wouldn't get sacked as much. Yes, the O line is kind of a turnstile, just letting people in and doing whatever they want. But running backs not picking up blocks. Yeah, but if they didn't, if he wasn't running around extending the plays, he would be sacked less. So it's just his play style is conducive to him being sacked more. But clearly, it works. He's, it does. He's never. He's never. 
missed a start since he's been drafted. He's been the starter. Never missed. Never missed a game. Oh, knock on wood. I was trying to do knock on wood if you're with me. Yeah. Hey. Um. Okay. You talk. We talk about Russ, right? Fourth in rushing as a team. That's great. Fantastic. That's great. So that probably helps out a lot for Russ. Um, the only <laughs> I want to I want I want to tell you this. The Seahawks' a margin of victory last season. Ooh. Was 0. 0.6. Yeah, it's not good. It's 0. 0.6. Yeah, but what were they like? Seven and one in uh, one score games, something yeah. like that. Yeah, they were really good at winning the close ones. Yes. They leave you really biting your nails at the end there. I have never been more stressed, like being a Seahawks fan. Just every single game, like every single game, the first half doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah, you've matter. always said this. Yeah. I can attest. We, you've we, always said we this. could be up by 25, 24, and you're like, ah, don't worry. They like to make it a nail biter. Let's make this one close. Yeah. Give the fans what they paid for. So that's what the Seahawks. I think they just love doing that. They love making it dramatic. They'll have some weird plays where it's just like, oh well, now the other team is back, or we're down and just nothing's working the entire time. And then it's like, oh, end of the third quarter. It's like, oh, we're playing a game. Wait, I'm Russell Wilson. Let me just let me just win. Right. And right. then be the most, like, chill dude ever. He is. Okay, so I we got to kind of speed this up a little bit. I want to talk about Jamal Adams before we leave this segment. Okay? Okay, let's let's just hop onto that real quick. Yeah, Jamal Adams coming in, right? Um, Three-year career so far. He's been a two-time Pro Bowler and a fir- uh, one-time first-team All-Pro. Okay, he's got two picks, 25 passes, defense, six forced fumbles, 12 sacks, and 210 solo tackles. 32 QB pressures. In the span that he's done that, Seattle as a team has only had 26. Mm-hmm. Now, I know this isn't Legion of Boom we're talking about, but defense is a big part of your guys' identity during your successful run. Since Pete Carroll. That's that's what it's been. It's been defense and Russell Wilson. So, do you like this? Do you like this him coming in? It's a tough one because you can say that, okay, yeah, the Seahawks have flopped on a lot of their first-round picks. And maybe they have. But they've done great with every pick after that. They've done great with so many picks after that. But what is bad is they usually use those first-round picks and turn them into maybe four or five or six other picks where they might be more successful. So now we're missing out on not just two first-round picks, but that could transfer into possibly ten picks you know, third, fourth, fifth rounders over the over the next two years. Right. So we may be losing out on some talent that we do actually want. Like in your offensive line? Ow. <clears throat> but I still think it's a good move. It's, it's very Belichickian of them to do that, just to go out and get a guy who is established, get a guy who knows the ropes, and instead of taking a gamble in the draft, you just take... It's not even as much of a gamble. You go out and get a guy who is pretty solidified in what he can do for you on the field. Right. So, do you like it? It's a good move. Okay, it's a good move. All right. Uh, my just before we end this, from the bottom to the top, my hot take: Rams, Arizona, 49ers. 49ers. Okay. Seahawks. Okay. And that's not just to appease you, because I don't give a shit. <laughs> do you? Would you got? Do you agree? Disagree? Oh man, I guess I'd have to go through the specific schedules, but I think. Oh man, I would actually do a completely different. Um, I'm still. I'm gonna say Arizona is still last. Okay. But doing better. Right. I'm. I'm gonna say that there is. A more clear cut division winner. This year, instead of just by two games, might be maybe even three. But I'm saying the Cardinals, and then the Rams, and then the Seahawks, and then the 49ers. Good. I'm so glad literally, we I'm literally glad. what happened this year will happen it's again. again. And we'll see what the Seahawks can do in those one-score games. Hopefully, we'll have less of them. All right. Very good. Very good. I, I liked that. I enjoyed that. That uh, concludes our first segment, talking about the NFC West. Uh, NFC Best. Oh, okay, we're doing that now. Um, Okay. So, you know, I guess we're going to shift gears here, uh, go back into the NBA. Uh, We know that the season is coming back soon. 
but we're not going to really get into any current events, right? There's not a whole lot to talk about as far as, um, you know, the bubble just yet. So we're going to talk about some past things. I have five players here who were touted to be amazing players, were amazing players by the time they played, but were hindered by injuries. Okay, and those players are Brandon Roy. Oh, man. Yeah. Derek Rose. Who is actually still playing? Yes, yes. Tracy McGrady, the old T Mac dude, man. Grant Hill, and Penny Hardaway. Who do you want to start with? Goodness, who do you, who do you want to start with? Well, maybe we don't have to go through all of them. I do have I, things yeah. to say about all of them, but I guess the biggest question is: out of those five guys, who do you think would have had the most successful career had they not been hindered by injuries? Man, that is a rough one. I am definitely a huge fan of Brandon Roy. I love Brandon Roy. Love Brandon Roy. I mean, especially because he went to UW. That's that's me being a huge homer. Like, I don't really have a college team that I root for, but you know, he's from Washington. Local, local he's teams. from Yeah. Yeah. So seeing him stay in the Pacific Northwest is just nice. It's like like, oh, okay, now this it feels like a homegrown guy, you know? Okay, so so I like I, I like Brandon Roy. So let me tell you a little bit about Brandon Roy while he did play. Okay, Brandon Roy played three hundred and twenty six games out of a possible five hundred and fifty eight. Yeah, that is fifty eight percent of games in his career. Yeah, just to put that in perspective, okay, I have some stats about the greats. Okay, MJ played eighty nine percent of his games. Kobe eighty four, Larry Bird eighty four, Dwayne Wade eighty one, and Dirk Nowitzki played ninety percent of his games in his career. Longevity, uh, their careers, you know. That's a huge part of it. you got to be there to be the man. And so, and that's the sad part, is because when I say 58%, that's sad. He played barely more than half of the games that he should have been playing. Yeah. So, his career high, right, was an 08 and 09, averaging 22 points a game, 48% field goal, okay, uh, 4.7 rebounds per game, and 5 assists. That season, the Blazers were the fourth seed in the West, which in 08 and 09, that Western Conference was hell. Very intense. That is, yeah, that that was a hot one. Oh, my goodness. Like, he just could, what what he could have been. That's what I mean. And he played in a time in 08 and 09 and 10 and 11, right before Super Team started happening, right? You give him a few more pieces. Uh, he played with him, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge already. For, and for me, it's, it's another, like, Big piece. It's it's literally that season you're talking about is the season right after the Supersonics left. So it's like, I'm clinging to, like, what do I have? Yeah, you, you have know? the Blazers. I have the Blazers. They're right there. And it's like, oh, we have this. He was, he was like a hero. You know, like, I have Brandon Roy. Like, this is this is the guy. This is the guy to do it. And he, he, he played fantastic. He was a good piece. Maybe not, you know, the greatest thing we've ever seen. Of course, we're only having this conversation because he was great in the beginning we have no idea how it would have panned out but it would have been great to build around absolutely 100 percent. you would have drawn more role players maybe even more stars to come in yeah and brandon roy is on this list because he only played five seasons yeah okay there's a guy on this list today that we're going to talk about that literally played 16 seasons yes he was there he was solid he was so solid all right, just jump right into it. Okay. We're going to get right into yeah. it. Yeah, Tracy McGrady. Yep. Okay, played 16 seasons in the NBA. Yep. Now, just to give you that stat, McGrady played 75% of the games he was in. So where when I was thinking about this list, and the, why, the reason I included him was because he was a talent like Kobe. Okay? Yeah. A scorer. In, in Really in the same time frame as it, well. It was. He could have been a rival. Yeah. Now, he was injured. But he kept coming back. But he, he, he got injured, and it was at a key moment of his career. Right. Well, I actually have an interesting stat. Okay, so so with Trace McGrady, okay, we'll go into it. He had seasons where he only played 30 games, 35 games, 47 games, and 49 games. Out of an 82-game season. So he had four seasons under 50. All right? His best season, that Magic team that he was on, was only the eighth seed in the East. Yeah. That was in 2002-2003 season. Now... The sad part about that team is you know who else was on that team but was injured? Who was on that team? Grant Hill. Oh, my God. And he's on right. this list. He's on the list as well. Yep, that's right. So we, the duality of that we can get into. But with the Grady, 
I'm not going to say McGrady could have been. Like, he's not my top pick for dude that could have performed great if he never got injured. He's not. Because two reasons. He played 16 seasons. He played 75% of his games. And when he was healthy, he had people around him, and he still didn't win. He played with Yao. He did. I, I loved that Rockets team. That Rockets team was, honestly, like, one of my friends from high school, actually, like, I, that was I started watching basketball with him, and he loved the Rockets, dude. Right. He he loved the Rockets. They, but he didn't do shit. He was a he was, okay. So Kobe grew up. Okay. Kobe was a very selfish player, like McGrady was his whole career. Yeah. About scoring and you know being the guy. Kobe was that way, but Kobe grew up. McGrady. By the time he did mature, it was too late. Past he was his, out of his past window. His prime. Yeah, he was out of his window. He was still a athletic like dynamic player but past really what you want to be as a leader of your team yeah he just wasn't so he's in this list i'll leave him here but he's not my guy that i say is gonna be (laughs) you know could have been amazing stats if you had never been injured i don't think so maybe that 2002 2003 team with grant hill on that team maybe they could have done made some waves could have been somewhere yeah well and that we could talk about that with uh, Grant Hill, because he's also on this list, right? You play with McGrady. He only played like 21 games that season before he went down with injury. Mm-hmm. You have a full 82 with, with Grant Hill, who, unlike McGrady, was not a selfish player. No, no, he moved around. He was a. He came from Duke, okay? Yeah. <laughs> played for Coach K. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a very fundamental player, an unselfish player, an all around good dude. So maybe that season, but as far as McGrady's concerned, he's at the bottom of this of this list for me. He, Grant Hill is just the guy who goes out there and gets it done. He he does what he needs to do. Nothing flashy about it. He's just a solid player. Like you can never not depend on him. No, and I yeah. And here's the sad stat about Grant Hill. Right, sixty seven percent of his possible games played, he played. He had seasons with fourteen. 4, 29, 0, and 21 games played. Mm. That's five seasons of less than 30 games. All right. His career high came in 2000. He's scoring 25, 26 points a game. He had a great field goal percentage at 48, averaging six rebounds, five assists. And he was with the Pistons at this time by himself. Okay. And they still got seventh in the East seed that year for playoffs. It's sad. He had a resurgence with Phoenix, but also it was outside of his window. He he was he did play great for that Phoenix team. Yes, he yes. did. But he was still outside of his window. That team was pretty much all Steve Nash and Ari Sotomayor. Basically, yeah. But he was there and he played great. It's just it was outside of his window. And I feel like on my list, he's not at the top of it. But I do feel the most sympathy for him because how great of a guy he was. Just he's just a, he's he's just a good guy. Like yes. you you that's a guy you root for. You just want him to succeed. You do. I don't know. Uh, I hated him for a little while. <laughs> Because he was a Phoenix son, okay? Uh, it was a rival of the Lakers for a little bit of a uh, small period of time there. But I do I do have sympathy for Grant Hill. I don't think he ever would have been the guy because of his personality. Because of his play style. Because of the way he played. Yeah. He would have been a great number two. Absolutely. Right? Like maybe in the type of way that kind of D Wade was playing with, well, with well, LeBron. Yeah, exactly. Like how I was saying on our on our last hot route that D. Wade is the more elusive kind of guy who's just going to really get in there and do what needs to get done. That was Grant Hill. Just getting things done. Right. And so it's it's very sad. Uh, it makes me sad. I Because, like I said, played for Coach K, dude. I love Coach K. <laughs> All right. We have two more left on this list. Do you want to go with Penny? You can go with Penny. Let's go with Penny. Okay, let's go with Penny. Penny played 58% of the games he could have played in. It's just the exact same number as Brandon Roy. Just, uh, but he played sad. thirteen seasons. Exactly, like just just the same percentage, but just to realize how long he played is even more like it hits harder because he missed that many more oh, games. Yeah. You know, his seasons of games played is worse than what I just said about Grant Hill. Right? He had games. He had seasons of nineteen, four, thirty-seven, four again, zero, and sixteen. And for those of you who didn't catch this earlier, that's out of 82 games. That is not even a full season added up right there. It's really not. So, it's and it's sad. Okay, so his career high, obviously, was when he played with Shaq. Yeah. Okay. People can't forget that he played with Shaq. 
he was Kobe before Kobe was Shaq's Robin. Yes. Yes. I mean, shout out that magic moment. And he was a better, very good. He was a better teammate than Kobe was he when was. he played he with was. Shaq. He was. He was. And so that season where they, well, you know, where he had his career high, his 21 points per game, he was shooting a 51% from the field. Okay, that's half. Half your shots are going in. Four rebounds, seven assists. Okay, they got the second seed in the East in that season. They went 60-22. and 22. Do you know why they were the second in the East that season? This is the 95-96 season. Oh, God. <laughs> the old Bulls. Hey. Which Bulls? Oh, the the Goat Bulls. Oh, the 72 and 10 yes, Bulls, yeah. the Goat Bulls. Imagine having the that team best Bulls. with Penny and Shaq going 60 and 22, feeling good about yourself, but these assholes are over here. Uh, well, we had so many teams in the Bulls dynasty that were amazing teams. Well, I think that about the just, Knicks, that just fell the Sonics, through. Yeah, Knicks, Sonics, Jazz. The Pacers. Just, yeah, we had so many teams in that time frame that were just like, Oh, no, don't worry about them. You, you guys are not in the history books because, well, we're better. But that that's where that's where Penny was, in, in the shadow of a giant. Yes, he was. And then Shaq leaves. Okay, and pretty sad for, for Penny is that after Shaq leaves, even without all those injury seasons, he doesn't ever play with anyone else that's, yeah. that's of, of mention. Okay, he doesn't. So, you know, his career stats, not bad. 15 points per game, four and a half rebounds, five assists. It's just kind of sad. His career, obviously, with injuries, but never played with anyone else. That's the saddest part for me. He never no one, never got paired because of his injuries. No one wanted him. So Penny's there. Now, the last guy on our list is my number one. That's your number one? My number one. D-Rose. I actually didn't... Yes, it's D-Rose. I knew this on purpose. I didn't save D-Rose for last. We just kind of got here. <laughs> it was, we just meandered, okay. and uh, this is where we ended up. D-Rose is still playing. He's still playing. But... He's not... He's not... He's not the guy. He's not the guy. It's sad, okay? So, D-Rose only has four seasons of, like, substantial amount of time missed. He had seasons of 39, 0, mm-hmm. 10, and 25. And he's made his comeback, but it's just outside of his window, like we've been saying. Career highs, 25 points per game, 44 uh, field goal percentage, four rebounds a game, almost eight assists a game. And that was in the 2010-2011 season. Is that his MVP season? That was his MVP season where they took the Heat to seven games. Yep. 62-20. and 20. Youngest MVP to date. They were the number one seed in the East that year. Yep. The problem for him is he played against... Prime LeBron and D Wade and Chris Bosh. And what are you gonna do? I mean, it's a it's a super team. It well, was it was actually uh, a very competitive East. Oh yeah, Eastern Conference in, in that time frame, which is uncommon to say because usually it's the West that's that's very just very good. You, know, you have teams in the East that have won fifty games. Yeah. yeah. So he had such a great team around him with like, you know, Boozer, Taj Gibson. Prime Noah. Prime Joe Kim Prime Noah Joe was, Kim was Noah. a force. Yeah, he was back then. He was a force. He was. He didn't need to fucking worry about scoring. And that was the great thing about him is that he knew he needed to play defense. He knew he needed to rebound. Yeah. Couldn't shoot free throws for shit, but it didn't matter because he knew who was going to the line. Yep. Derrick Rose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, he, he's my guy because of that MVP season. If he can stay healthy, and that was only like his third, fourth year in the league, maybe second or third. And so if he can stay healthy... LeBron leaves for Cleveland. He leaves that super team. He can win titles with the Bulls. D. Rose owns the East. He does. I mean, yes, LeBron goes back to a team with Kyrie Irving on it. But yeah. <laughs> prime Derrick Rose, I would take over Kyrie Irving. Hot take. Man, that is a hot one. So I, I can definitely get behind that pick. The youngest MVP ever. Yes. Taking the super team out to seven. Seven games. And what they could have had could have been massive. It, it, is... it could have been great for years to come. Like, you lock down Derrick Rose in his prime, and then you get these... You, you will not even you get these people. You already have these supporting players around him. And you can, you can attract more. Exactly. With the talent that's there. You look at most of the successful teams that have won multiple titles or anything, it's like they have the talent there to win titles, but then they attract more, more people that can fill in roles that you're looking for, and they're more willing to come because they have a shot to win a title. 
and it's it's rough for me so i'm i'm looking at this it's like all right we yeah d rose is is your one just like cuz i would i would have loved to see you know what he could have done with that team but we we do still get to see him play we got to and get to see him so that's why you're going with Brandon so Roy. So that's why I'm going with Brandon Roy. I fucking knew it. Because we didn't, like, it, he just fizzled out. It just, he got hurt, and that was it. Yeah, I know I said Derrick Rose is my number one, but, like, Brandon Roy played the least amount of seasons of all these guys we just talked about. So, yes, um, unfortunate for him, and he that's why he's my number two. <laughs> I don't think he was as good as Derrick Rose, but also... Maybe I'm more hurt by the fact that Brandon Roy, we didn't get to see him play. Like you just said, the yeah. point you made was great. We still see Derrick Rose running around. We see glimpses yeah. of, of that old Derrick Rose. But geez, Brandon Roy, man. He's more of a floor general. Yeah, yeah. Commanded. Commanded out there. Well, I guess, you know, we've talked about that for a little while. and Got what? our NFC best in. We got our basketball what ifs in. What if so? Yeah, it's like a it's like a Bo conversation, like a Bo Jackson. So what time is it? It is time for hot route. Hot route. Hot route. Okay, I'm hot routing you today. Okay, perfect. All right, what do we got? Because I didn't have any hot routes for you anyway, so it would have been awkward. All right, so I have a couple questions for you. Actually, a few. I have three. They're going to increase in difficulty as we go on. Perfect. I hate it. G- good. Okay, so. Last Dance just got put on Netflix. Oh my god, yeah. So those of you that didn't watch it when it came out, you can watch it now. Gotta watch The Last Dance. If you did watch it, you saw that Michael Jordan wouldn't play baseball. So he missed a season, came back at the end of that second season, wasn't able to get the Bulls to a title. Do you think, if Michael Jordan does not take a baseball sabbatical, he has eight rings instead of six? I think no. Those two three-peats were different teams and he needed to leave he i mean he had just won a three-peat who had done that before him the celtics the celtics <clears throat> so that that was it that was the only team that had done it before him so he's he's at the top the hunger's gone he he went out to go conquer something else didn't really conquer it oh. but he needed that change of pace and then coming back everybody's messing with him like oh you know what you ain't Oh, you're coming back to this now? Couldn't perform in baseball? Oh, we got number 45 Jordan out there. That gave him that hunger back to get those next three. Okay, so you don't think... He stays there. I don't think... I don't. Th- I think maybe they get five. Maybe four. Four or five in a row. But I don't think they get the eight. Okay. Okay, very good. I like that. Okay. We just got a report about Joe Kelly, the pitcher of the Dodgers getting suspended for eight games for throwing a ball near the head of an Astro and inciting, I don't know, a brawl, okay? So let me tell you the punishments the Astros got for their fucking cheating scandal, okay? $5 million fine, GM suspended for a year, manager suspended for a year, assistant GM suspended for a year, and they forfeit a first and second round draft pick in, for two years. Oh, Three. so nothing happened. Oh. That's where we're going with the hot route. What do you think is an appropriate punishment for these Astros? For the Astros? Mm Mm-hmm. But before you answer, I brought up the Joe Kelly thing because I think me, along with most baseball fans, are saying free Joe. Everybody's a Joe Kelly fan right now. Yeah. Everybody is rooting for Joe Kelly. Just like, you know what? We were just waiting for, like, some kind of retaliation. Like, you just need it. You just need to see it, like, in your bones. Like, like, all these fans are outraged. Like, I want to see it. And they're outraged because of the things I just mentioned aren't even real punishments. So what's your ideal punishment for the the Astros? The ideal punishment is just void that championship. I'm glad you said that. Because, I mean, literally, they don't care about it. They don't care about it at all. They didn't even apologize. No, they didn't. They never actually said, oh, like, we shouldn't have done that. I don't need I don't need a specific. Oh, why would like, you feel like you well, needed to? I don't need a specific like I'm sorry. Like I'm not a child. I don't need to be told specific. Words, I am like, a child, and I want to hear I'm fucking sorry. <laughs> but I need there's zero remorse. It was just like oh yeah we we got caught. We did it. We we did it. That's it. And now we're suspended. Some people and some people. That's it. That's the whole thing. Right. And I'm glad that Joe Kelly 
that Joe Kelly just isn't taking any shit. I love it too. And I mean, like, who who knows if he meant to? The first one he threw was a breaking ball. <laughs> that when he fucking gunned it, it was a breaking ball. And that's not usually what you're gonna throw if you're gonna bean somebody. Yeah, no, it's not. You can throw it fast. But man, that pouty face. Just like, so oh, good. Oh, sorry. Mm. No. Yeah, Joe Kelly is the hero of of any baseball fan right now. That's, Unless you're an Astro fan. That's fantastic. If you're an Astro fan, one, I'm sorry that you liked a team that cheated. And two, if you're defending them, go fuck yourself. Okay, which will lead us to our third hot route, okay? Last week, you asked me to give you an over-under on the Patriots. And you gave it to me. I think uh, the over-under was like, what, nine? It was eight and a half, and you said over. I said over. Okay, well, we're going to do the same thing today with the Raiders. Oh. You're going to give me an over-under on the Raiders. Now, okay. the over-under listed on for Vegas odds right now is seven and a half. Okay. Okay, I have the schedule here. I can get behind that. Let's see. You can Let's get see. behind it. Yeah. Get the fuck out of my house. E- okay. Week one at Carolina. At Carolina? Yep. That's a win. Week two at home versus the Saints. That's a loss. Week three at New England. That's a loss. Week four, at home against Buffalo. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They're they're at home. Let's say they win. Okay, week five, at Kansas City. Okay, let's. that's a loss. <laughs> okay, cool. Then we have a bye week. Oh, there you go. It's going to be nice. We lose the KC probably by a lot, and then we just go into a bye week and... Just forget about just it. Just forget about Act it. Act like it never happened. Okay, uh, at, coming out of the bye week, we're at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a loss. Sorry. Oh, because Tom Brady's there? No, because Gronk. Oh, shit. I forgot about Gronk. God damn it. When I wrote this list, I was like, oh, Tampa Bay, we got him. I just totally forgot that they have, you know, the Patriots now. Uh, After that, we're at Cleveland. That's a win. And then at LA Chargers, or essentially our second home. Yeah, no, that's another win. Then we're at home versus the Broncos. At home? Yeah, we're at Allegiant Stadium okay. in Vegas. I'm I'm gonna say that you guys split the games, but it's both the away teams win. So you're giving us an L. I'm, an L on that one. Yep. Then we're at home against Kansas City. <clears throat> okay, that's another loss. Then we're going to Atlanta. Ooh. That's a loss. Then we're going to New York Jets. Okay, let's call that a win. Then we're hosting the Colts at home. Mmm. I think that's a win. I yeah, think that's a win. Fuck you guys, yeah, Rivers. you guys just Philip Rivers ain't shit. He threw three picks last time we played him. Yeah. Then we're at home against the Chargers. Let's say another win. Just ooh. And then we're at Miami. Yes, play. Oh yeah. Actually, no, played, we're at home against you're Miami. Played. You're at home against Miami? Yeah. Okay. Let's say that's a win. And then we finish the season at the Broncos. And then I said a loss for the first split. one. So win. Yep, so win that one. So that's okay, seven. So that's, that's eight. That was, I said eight? That's eight. Wrong. You gave us the over. Oh, I love that. Damn it. <laughs> I'd actually be very disappointed hey, if I, we had an eight and eight season. I really would be. I'm, I'm taking the over. I want at least a nine and seven. At least just give me a win. Just give me a like a... Yeah, I don't want to be 500. Okay, I want to be a little bit above that. Hey, so I'm ta- I'm uh, I'm taking the over. Good, I'm glad. Quote glad. me. Quote me. Quoting Ed Harris, Raiders will win at least eight games this season. All right. Well, that was fun. We talked about your division essentially, NFC West. It's a good time. Don't forget my hot take at the beginning, right? It's gonna go Rams, Cardinals, 49ers, Seahawks. Yeah, we'll see. All right, Ed. then we. Then we talked about some NBA players whose careers were cut short by injuries, and it was actually kind of a sad conversation as I reflect about it now. I'm... Just looking back on it, you're looking at all these players that were prolific in their own way, yeah, in their own right at that specific time. And yeah, the injuries makes it more dramatic. Yeah. The, I mean, if, yeah, if they didn't get hurt, we wouldn't be doing this. No, but if it's, we were it's deprived just... of something special. Exactly. And then we finally finished out with a, a hot route for Ed here. So, hey, that's it for us today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm Chris Nellison. I'm Ed Harris. You guys have a great day. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of Almost Agreeable. You can catch all new episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Almost